like magic. This is incredible. Hello, hello, my name is Shay and I like to make things and I am back with another video, another project. This week I'm telling you how I made my fiber optics dress, AKA the most expensive dress that I have ever made. This has been by far the biggest project I have ever done. It took from start to finish about eight months, but in my opinion, it's also one of the coolest dresses I've ever made, so worth it. I've been wanting to make this dress since like 2016 when I first saw the Zach Posen Met Gala dress and I just fell in love with it. But fiber optics fabric is so so expensive that until now I just could not afford to make it. But now I'm an adult with adult money and the sponsor for this video so I can finally make this project. But yeah, with all that said, let's get started. First of all, the hardest part about this dress is the fabric. I ordered my fiber optics dress from Dreamlux Italia, and it's probably one of the most well-known and well-established places to buy fiber optics fabric. There's a couple other options on Etsy or AliExpress, but Dreamlux Italia is like the official one. However, Dreamlux Italia also costs like hundreds of dollars per yard. And I wanted to make a ball gown, so I needed like seven to 10 yards of fabric. So I already knew this one was gonna be really pricey. Typically with the ball gown style dress, I'll get 10 to 15 yards of fabric just so I have enough for a little extra. But with this one, I did not have the money for a little extra. So before I even ordered the fabric, I actually ended up draping a mock-up so I could get a better idea of the exact amount of fabric that I would need. I ended up ordering the minimum amount of fabric that I thought I would need, which was about six yards, and it still ended up being like over $1,500. Officially making it the most I have ever spent on a project. <laughs> yes, you heard that correct, $1,500. And that is not including customs. So on that note, let me introduce you to a much cheaper option to get clothes and this week's sponsor, ThreadUp. ThreadUp is an online thrift store with over 40,000 brands, new arrivals every day, and up to like 90% off retail prices. In my closet for fall, I'm missing a lot of long pants and long sleeves, so I wanted to fill that gap with ThreadUp rather than going to like a fast fashion brand or somewhere that's producing new clothes. I love shopping secondhand because not only is it cheaper, but it also keeps a lot of old clothes out of landfills and gives them a second life. So it's actually better for the environment as well. So here's my little thread up haul and how I styled them. First up, we have these Faro casual pants. They retail for about $74. I only paid $16 on thread up for them. And I styled them with a beret and a crop top into this subtle strawberry shortcake look. Next, I also got these Travolta casual pants. They retail for about $95. I only paid about seven for them on thread up. I paired it with this express turtleneck sweater also from thread up. It's brand new with tags and it's estimated retail is $68 and I only paid $17 for it on ThreadUp. I styled these two with a brown wool coat, but it turned into this like, hello, I live in New York City and I'm very fashionable kind of look. Just a clean fall look. Another find was these Ann Taylor Loft corduroy pants. They retail for about $60, but I got them for $13 on ThreadUp. But I styled those with that same express sweater and a polka dot coat to give this like 101 Dalmatians, but fashionable outfit. I also got this Vineyard Vines long sleeve button down. It retails for about $71. I only paid $8 for it on thread up but I paired this with a yellow corduroy overall skirt to give this circusy kindergarten teacher outfit and lastly I got these Rebecca Minkoff overalls they retail for about $262 but I got them for about $85 on thread up I paired them with a Hawaiian shirt to give this Harry Styles outfit and if it looks familiar it's because I am wearing it right now I love them they're probably one of my favorite pair of pants. And ThreadUp even gave me a special promotion to share with you guys. You can shop ThreadUp with the link in my description and if you use my code Crescent, you'll actually get 30% off your whole first order, like your whole order, so it's pretty cool. And thank you so much to ThreadUp for sponsoring this video and partnering with me. Not only is my closet really cute now, but you also helped me to make cool projects like this possible. But now it is back to sewing this ridiculously expensive dress. It took about three weeks for the fabric to come in and it came in this big box and I was super excited to open it. Then when I started going through stuff, none of the lights worked. The lights were super dim, you couldn't see it unless it was like pitch black. So I ended up having to buy international minutes on Skype, call Dreamlux in Italy at like 1am, talk to the customer service rep, and then it turned out that they sent me bad electronics. So they ended up sending another box of fabrics with some replacements. And so a month or so later, I got my new lights. And when I put them in, you guys, it was like magical. <sighs> Like cameras don't do this fabric justice. It's really like starlight. And I know this fabric is ridiculously expensive, but it's also just so beautiful. It is the most beautiful fabric I've ever worked with. 
and it's actually pretty bright. It's like a flashlight. But now that I finally had the fabric in my hands, I could actually get started sewing. I'm starting off making the skirt because that's gonna take the most fabric and I just wanna make sure I have enough to finish the skirt. For this dress, I was trying to achieve a similar ball gown style look to the Zach Posen dress, but not exactly. I also wanted to take my own creative liberties with it, but I still really wanted to get that A-line, very pretty princess shape. And when you're sewing dresses, you always start with the under layers first to start building your shape. So the first thing I started with was a hoop skirt. I just got it from Amazon. It's nothing fancy. I've used it in so many of my dresses. I use the same hoop skirt in my Barbie dress and my Billie Eilish dress. I use it for everything. And then so the hoops don't show through and to give it more of that A-line shape, I made a simple petticoat out of gathered rectangles. This petticoat was just an organza rectangle gathered on a cotton waistband. And then to give it a little more oomph on the bottom, I also added a row of gathered tulle and then attached that to the bottom. To give the dress that ducktail shape at the end for a little longer train, I added a couple extra gathered tulle panels to the back just to give it that little tail shape. Once you sew that all up, you've got your nice petticoat. The next layer after the petticoat layer was the lining layer. The fiber optics fabric is actually see-through, so whenever you use the fiber optics fabric, you need a nice lining under it. I also used this lining as a practice run for draping the fiber optics fabric, which ended up being really helpful because the fiber optics fabric can only be cut and sewn in a very particular way. Okay, so here's how fiber optics fabric works. There's an LED light at one end of the fabric and there are a bunch of fiber optics cables that run through the fabric and carry the light from the LED to the ends of the fabric. And that's why the ends of the fiber optics fabric are always gonna be the brightest because that's where the light is being released. All the lights that we see in the middle of the fabric is just where light is escaping from little scratches and stuff on these fiber optics cables. But what this means for us with sewing is that you can't cut it in the middle, you can only cut it on the ends. When you cut, you are snipping that fiber optics cable, so everything after your cut is going to go dark. So what this all means pattern-wise is that the easiest way to make the skirt is to make it a rectangle, so that way there's no cuts and the shape is just created through pleating. So that's what I did. My skirt is just a pleated rectangle that I draped on my dress form. And you remember how I said I ordered the minimum amount of fabric that I could get away with? Yeah, that came to bite me in the butt. I actually underestimated the amount of fabric I need and my skirt did not make it all the way around. So we got a little creative and I actually ended up adding a train panel in the back to cover the gap and work as like the train of my dress because I just could not buy any more fabric. With that, I sewed the skirt to the waistband, turned on the lights of the dress and she was stunning. This was like the first moment where the dress really started to come together and I was just really, really proud of how it was coming out. It's actually not hard to walk in or twirl in. It just feels like a normal dress. The only thing is you have like battery packs stuffed in your waistband. But aside from that, it's just like a normal dress. But now that the skirt was done, it was time to move on to the top. As usual, I posted some designs in my stories and we voted. And you guys were really big fans of this deep V neckline with the big poof sleeves. So that's what I made. I used my sketch to drape up a bodice pattern and then use that pattern to cut out the pieces and all my fabrics. For this dress, I actually needed to make a four layer bodice, the lining layer, so it's nice against your skin, the strength layer, which is gonna give it the shape and also have the boning to keep it really structured, the outer lining layer, because the fiber optics fabric is see-through, and then lastly, the fiber optics fabric. So the first layer I made was the strength layer. I made it out of canvas, sewed it together, added in boning channels, as well as a little wire to support the deep V. Once I liked the fit of that, I worked on the outer lining and the fiber optics layer. Both of those fabrics are actually sewn together to make one layer. Not gonna lie, cutting the fiber optics fabric is kind of terrifying because you really only get one shot at it. You also have to be really careful about where you cut because you don't want to cut in the middle of any pieces or else the entire thing will go dark. But it does look very pretty when you cut it. Someone actually DM'd me and said it looks like Rapunzel's hair when it's cut and it kind of does. Like the way it just goes dark. But once all the pieces are cut, I assembled the outer lining layer and the fiber optics layer together and then you can finally start to see the glowing bodice. Then it's just a matter of attaching it to the strength layer, finishing the edges all nice, and then you have a light up bodice. Once the bodice is done, the last thing is the poofy sleeves. And they're just rectangles. It's honestly just a big rectangle gathered at the top and gathered at the bottom. You sew it up and voila, a glowing poofy sleeve. The last thing I did was clean up the insides because it was just a big mess of wires and fiber optics cables. So I neatened all that up and then I ended up hand sewing my lining in to cover it. Little did I know this was actually a terrible mistake. <laughs> you actually don't want to sew any of the wires into the bodice because it makes it unwashable. <laughs> but I spent like 10 hours hand sewing it in, so this is now a spot clean only top. Until I go back in and take the wires out. But with that, the dress is done! I got in some fancy makeup, put my hair in a bun, and ran off to do a cool night photo shoot with my parents. So, of course, here's a fancy montage. We actually 
ended up renting a camera to use for this photo shoot and it was so worth it. You can see the dress a bit when it's in the light, but it really, really shines in low light or in the shade or like best in pitch black. Most of these videos were taken in like lowish light, but at the very end of the night we found a trail that was completely dark and it just made the dress look so ghostly and cool. And this is probably my favorite look to the dress when it's just like in pitch black and it looks like it's floating. But also because it was totally dark and I was glowing, all the bugs like would come sit on the dress. So that was terrible. But that is it for this project. It's one that's been on my plate for like a long time now. And while I'm really, really proud of the results, I'm also really, really glad that it's over and I can work on something new so I'm definitely ready to move on to the next project. Now that I don't have school anymore, my goal is two projects a month, so hopefully there will be a lot more content coming soon, a lot more projects to share, and I'm going to be trying to post a video at least every other week. So subscribe if you want to see more content like this. I'm going to be trying really hard to make it. And again, a big, big, big thank you to ThreadUp for sponsoring this video. Please check out the link in my bio. You'll get 30% off your first order when you use my code CRESCENT, and you'll be supporting the channel, saving the planet, and doing a bunch of cool stuff like that. As always, you can check out my Instagram for daily sewing updates, but I think that is all for this one. Um, I will see you next time with a new project. Bye-bye!